Do you have FX nine nine one EX calculator? Hello. Oh, sorry, sir. Yes, I do. Okay. So in that calculator, you do you know how to take the log symbol? Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So log ten of x. We need to evaluate log ten of six. So when I'm going to press log in my calculator, since I have FX nine nine one EX classes calculator, the the screen is showing this log, and it's asking me for the base, and it's giving me like this bracket. So I need to tell my calculator that I want to evaluate ten of six. So when you plug in these values, you are going to get a value somewhere around zero point seven seven eight. So yeah. ten raised to the power of this value is going to get me to the value of six. Now log ten of six can also be written as lg six, where lg is called the natural log to the base ten. So some calculator might have LG key. Some recent one, recent calculators have this button log to the base ten of six. So we get this answer. So the rule that we can conclude from here is if y is raised to the power of ten to the power of x, that's an that's an exponential function. Then x is going to be log log to the base ten of y. Log ten to the power of y is the power. You can also say that log ten to the log ten of y is the power because it is equal to x. That ten must be raised in order to obtain y. So log ten of hundred. Is two that is because ten raised to the power of two is giving you hundred. Make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. So, if we if you have done functions in A, yes, obviously P one log functions. Here, there is a function and inverse function. We just talk about it. This is an exponential function, and y equals to log ten of x. These two functions are inverse of each other. Are inverse functions. So if I am getting 10 square as 100, if I plug in 100 over here in place of x, I'm going to get 2. So these are inverse functions. And if they are inverse functions, then you can visualize the graph of the exponential function first. The exponential function looks like this. So I think the screen is frozen. Okay, now it's fine. Oh yeah, the screen is quite frozen. Now it's better. Yes, sir, it's fine now. Yeah, I think I'm having internet issues again. So this is a line of y equals to x. If the equation to this line was y equals to 10 to the power of x, and this function was passing from 0 comma 1 on an inverse function, it should look something like this. It should be a reflection of the function in the line y equals to x. So this point is going to be 1 comma 0, and you can write the equation log of base. Ten of x. Are you getting it? So, can you explain this in words? Two are going to be inverse yeah. of each other. Sorry. Uh, can you explain this in words functions part again? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me know when if if my voice breaks or the screen is frozen, I have to repeat that part again for you. Okay. okay. I have okay. a feeling that the screen is also. The screen is lagging a bit, and I think my voice is also breaking. 
So if that is the case, we let it. It was just the screen for the inverse functions part. All right, sure. So I'll start from here that if we, I have an exponential function y equals to 10 to the power of x, then x is basically equal to log 10 of y. We convert it into a log function. Now, if you recall the graph of y equals to 10 to the power of x, it's, it's an exponential function, the red function. And if I want to draw its inverse, which is log 10 of x, then it is going to be a mirror image. It is going to be a reflection of the main function in the line y equals to x. So y equals to 10 to the power of x and y equals to log 10 of x are inverse functions because let's take example of x is 2. If in the exponential function, my 10 to the power of 2 calculate karunga, so I'm going to get a value of 100. So I'm going to get y value is 100. And in my log function, if I take x as 100, log 10 of 100, I'm going to get y as 2. So x and y are interchanged over here. Do you recall uh, so inverse I function? I don't get how you, you got the inverse function. That? Yes, please. So. Okay. Sure. Now, inverse functions are those functions in which, let's say, for example, y equals to 2x plus 3. And if I ask you to make an inverse, find inverse of this function, you would make x the subject like the like you did in p1 you are yes. going to make x the subject and then you are going to say that the inverse function is x minus 3 over 2 so whatever value of x i take over here let's say if this is f of x and if i take f of 1 i am going to get 5 over here 2 times 1 i think the screen is lagging again just hold on a second, I'm gonna end this meeting and rejoin again so that there is no confusion. Okay, okay? just give me one minute. Okay. Okay, now there isn't any lag, right? Yes, sir, it's fine now. All right. So my point was that if we have a function and I plug in x as one, I'm getting output as five. So inverse function should be a function that should have an opposite effect. If I am going to plug in five, I should get one back. Yes, yeah, so sir. If I plug in five, so I'm going to get one. Similarly, when we have an exponential function and when we have its inverse log function, why is, why am I calling this a inverse function to an exponential function? Because if let's say I take x as two, so 10 raised to the power of two is gonna give me 100. So when x is two, y is 100 over here. In the log function, when I'm going to take x x is 100, I'm going to get y is 2. So this is going to be 100 comma 2. The coordinates are going to flip. The x coordinate will become y and the y is going to become y, uh, x. So if we do this for every point, you're going to get a graph similar to this, where this is my exponential function. And this is going to be called my inverse of this exponential function and inverse of the exponential function is the log function. So a point zero comma one on an exponential function is going to be called one, is going to be reflected at one comma zero on an inverse function. 
So yeah. one thing we can take it from here is that exponential function and log functions are inverse of each other. And inverse functions are uh, geometrically mirror image of each other's shape in the line y equals to x. That's what you have also learned in P1. Right? Yes. Sir. Now, let's convert a few questions. Let's say the question says convert 10 raised to the power of x equals to 58 to log form. So if I want to write this down into a log form, this is an exponential term equation given to me. I need to convert it into a log form. So the base is 10, the exponent is x and the answer is equal to 58. The answer is equal to 58. So if I in go for the log, converting into log, I'll have to introduce log to the base. So the base is 10. And the log to the base 10 of 58 is going to give me the value of x. Log of a. For example, if we have an equa exponential equation a raised to the power of x equals to b, going from an exponential equation to a log equation would mean you convert this into a log form log to the base a b i'm calling this as my base of b is going to give me the power back that is x so i can write 10 raised to the power of x equals to 58 in the log form as log to the base 10 of 58 okay okay so any any problem so far do you have any questions in mind? No. Okay. No, sir. No. Let, let's say this is part A and part B says, I need to solve 10 to the power of X equals to 58 and give your answer, let's say to three significant figures. So if I want to solve 10 raised to the power of X equals to 58, the first step, I know that 58 will not result when I take X key any integer value. Because 10 raised to the power of 1 is 10 and 10 raised to the power of 2 is 100. So the value of x would be lying somewhere between 1 and 2. So I have to convert this into a log form to solve it. And to solve this, I'm going to take log of base 10 of 58. So once we have put it into a log form, you can just use your calculator and give me the answer. What is log? To the base One, 10 of 58. 1.7634. Now the fact is three significant figures. So this is going to be 1.76 as the answer. Okay. And vice versa, we can convert a log form to an exponential form. So let's say the second question says convert log of base 10 of x equals to 3.5 to exponential form. So what, what is the first step that comes to your mind? How am I supposed to convert this into an exponential form? 3.5 uh, to the power of one second so. 10 to the power of 3.5 equals to x perfect so x is going to be equal to base to the power of 10 3.5 so 10 to the power of 3.5 so 10 to the power of 3.5 comes out to be, if the second part was solve for x, I need to find the value of x. 10 raised to the power of 3.5 is roughly around? 
yeah 3162.27 so in three significant figures i can write it as 3160 so far it's okay yes sir all right so based on our discussion we can generalize our rules as if y is equals to a raised to the power of x then i can say that x is equals to log of base a of y and this conversion from an exponential to the log form is defined when the base when the base is greater than 0 and it is not equal to 1 this base must be greater than 0 okay you can't have y equals to negative 5 to the power of x the log of a negative number can not be calculated and this y over here okay these are all for the log form so this y must be greater than 0 as well if you take out your calculator and just try to find log of base 10 of minus 2 it's going to give you an mass error because this term cannot be negative yes so i'll get him out so these are some specific rules that we are going to sorry Uh, nothing so I was just saying that I got math error when I did the yeah exactly so we the rule that we need to remember is that log of a negative number is not defined acha now would you agree that 10 raised to the power of 1 is 10 yes 5 raised to the power of 1 is 5 3 raised to the power of 1 is 3 so if i converge let's say this into log i'm going to say log to the base 3 of 3 is 1 if i convert this into log form i'm going to say log to the base 5 of 5 is 1 and log to the base 10 of 10 is 1 so as a general rule i can also say that log to the base a of a is always equal to 1 okay Okay. The so log of fifteen of fifteen, log to the base fifteen of fifteen is also going to be one. Now, few other rules. Let's say five to the power of zero, ten to the power of zero is going to be what? Ah, uh, one. One. So if I convert this into a log form what will i get log to the power of 1 log to the base of 5 of 1 is going to be 0 log yeah. to the base 10 of 1 is going to be 0 so that means log to any base of 1 is going to result in 0 okay Okay, so. Okay. Now I want you to use your calculator and calculate this for me. Log two of two square, log of five of five square. I I need to answer my doorbell. I'll I'll just be back. Okay.
Yeah. So, aren't we getting the same result? Log two, log two of two square is two. Log five of five square is two. Okay. So this rule can this rule can be simplified as log to the base a of a to the power of x is going to be what is this going to be equal to? Sorry, sir, I can't see what you just wrote. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I'm asking, for example, if I had log of 10 of 10 to the power of 3, the answer would be equal to the power itself, 3. So oh. log to the base a of a of raised to the power of 5 is going to be? 5. Log a to the log to the base a of a raised to the power of x is going to be equal to x. X. So I can yes, the answer is going to be equal to x. So as a simplification rule, what I can do is I can say that I, I can take this x on the left hand side and multiply it by log a of a. And log a of a is going to be equal to Um, one. One. So x multiplied by one is x. So the power can always go on the left hand side of the log term and multiply it by this, by this expression. So even I can, if I have log five of five square, I can take two on the left hand side and I can write two times log five of five. Getting it? Yes, sir. Okay. One more rule. Achha. So take out your calculator and write five to the power of log of five of X. So instead of x, write 25, let's say. So what is the answer going to be equal to? 25. 25. So similarly, A, the rule says that if your uh, expression is A raised to the power of log of to the base A, the same as over here, of any number, let's say x, the result is always going to be equal to x. OK. Okay. Anything you want to discuss in the previous slide and the next slide? Are these no, rules here? So, so I'm going to highlight the rules. This was the rule. One, two, the power rule three, and So if you don't have any questions, we can look at some questions. Question says convert 5 cube into 125 to log form. So can I do that? How am I supposed to convert this into the log form? Log. 5 raised to 125 equals to 3. Equals to 3. Yeah. Then convert log to the base 3 of x equals to 2.5 to exponential. Three to the power of two point five equals to x. So x is going to be equal to three raised to the power of two point five. Yes. So I've converted into exponential form, and if they ask me to solve 
as per three decimal places or three significant figures. I'm just going to use my calculator and evaluate three raised to the power of 2.5. All right. Now, this is the part we, where we can use the log rule. Find the value of a log to the base 2 of 16. So, if let's say we have to do this without the calculator. So, can I use some log rules to find this? Can I write 16 in some other way? Uh, 2 to the power uh, three. 2 to the power of 4. Yeah. Now, what will happen to this 4? It will be the answer. It is going to be the answer. If I just do one more step, it is going to be 4 times log 2 of 2. And log 2 of 2 is 1, so the answer is going to be 4. Now, you try the second part log of to the base 3 of 1 upon 9. I'm not sure about this one. So is there a way to write 1 upon 9 in as a power of 3? Yeah, to the power of minus 2. So 1 upon 9 can be written as 1 over 3 squared. And if I just write this fraction in the other way, I can also say log to the base 3. 1 upon 3 squared is same as saying 3 raised to the power of minus 2. Yeah, so it will be minus so, 2. So the answer is going to be minus 2. So even if I use my calculator to evaluate log 3 of 1 upon 9, it is going to result in minus 2. Okay. Let's try another one. Do you want me to go back to the previous slide or is it fine? Simplify log to the base x of cube root x upon x. All right, I want you to take a try on this. Is it minus two? No. This is cube root of x. So I can write x to the power of one upon three in the numerator. And there is x to the power of one in the denominator. If I simplify this fraction, what can I write? Uh, x to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1. Exactly, and that is? Minus 2 over 3. Minus 2 upon 3. Now you tell me what should be the answer. Minus 2 over 3. Minus 2 over 3. So that is the simplification and evaluation. Okay, done? Yes, sir. All right. So, so far, the, we, we did some rules about the log. We started off with what exponential function was and what is the log function. It's basically an inverse of the exponential function. It, so, you are expected always to convert from uh, exponential form to the log form or vice versa. Then we said we discuss about the rules and 
the few rules were acha so the conditions for making a log function was that the base should always be greater than 0 and the value in this case the y value should also be greater than 0 the base should be greater than 0 and should not be equal to 1 then we did the rules and the first rule says that log to the base a of a is always going to be equal to 1 log to the base a of 1 is going to be 0 log to the base a of a raised to the power of x is always going to be x and the last rule we did was a raised to the power of log a of x is always going to be x so these were the rules now we are going to study laws of logarithm So there are three rules, three laws. One is the multiplication law. The other is the division law, and then there is a power law. So starting off with the multiplication law. Multiplication law is simply stated as that if you are asked to evaluate log to a certain base of a number that is a product of two numbers x and y so x and y is a product of two numbers x and y and you have been asked to calculate the log of this number then the this log of a product can be split up into log of a of the first number plus log to the same base of the second number so log of a of x y is equal to log a of x plus log a of y. Example, log to the base 10 of let's say 15. Okay, now I can split 15 as log to the base 10 of 3 into 5. So this can be written as log to the base 10 of 3 plus log to the base 10 of 5. Okay, and you can confirm this from the calculator as well. That's your multiplication law. Okay. 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 The proofs are not important, but if you want, I can show you the proofs as well. Okay, how are these formulas derived? Do you want me to do that, or is the no, rule enough? No, no, no. Sorry. Never mind. Okay. The second is the division law. In the division law, we have log of a log to the base of a fraction that is x upon y. So x and y are being divided with each other. We call this a fraction, and this can be split up as log to the base a of x minus log to the base a of y so when we have a product the splitting is going to be the sum of the log sum of the individual logs and when we have a fraction we if we want to split it up that is going to be the difference of the two logs of the terms can this be remembered yes So example, log to the base 5 of, uh, let's say, 5 upon 10. So l this can be written as log to the base 5 of 5 minus log to the base 5 of 10. I can easily calculate log to the base 5 of 5. What is the answer of log to the base 5 of 5? one and this would be some decimal number that i'm not interested in right now okay like this is going to be the answer now the next law is the power law and we just touch upon this in the previous rule as well power law is something that says log to the base a of that number raised to some power m so as per the power law this this can be written as this 
power can go on the left hand side and be multiplied with log a of x so that is the simple power law so example could be let's say log to the base 10 of uh, 10 cube or it could be any number as well let's say 5 cube so can you use the calculator and give me the answer for this log in your calculator press log to the base 10 of 5 cube what answer do we get uh, 2.0969 yeah. so this result is going to be same as m m is a power so power is 3 times log to the base 10 of 5 so now if i in if in the calculator i plug in 3 times log of 10 of 5 I'm still going to get the same answer that is 2.0969. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's a to the extension of power rule, if we extend the power law, let's say we have log this log to the base a of 1 upon x. Can I write this as log a x to the power of minus 1 first? Yeah. Can 1 upon x be written as x to the power of minus 1? Yeah. So what will happen to this power of minus 1 if I apply power law over here? Uh, it will multiply, it will change the sign to negative of the entire Yes, so this is going to turn this into a negative log. So log a of 1 upon x is same as minus log a of x. That's another rule to remember. So let's see the examples now so that we are more clear. Am I moving too fast or is the pace okay? It's fine, okay. Do you need anything to copy down from this slide? Or should I, uh, okay. can I change the slide? You can change the slide. Okay. Now I am going to use the log of log to simplify the following expression. Number A, log of base 2 of 3 plus log of base 2 of 5. I'm writing these questions down. I want you to try this first and then we can discuss our answers. So to solve this first, solve the first one, 
log 2 of 3 plus log 2 of 5. This has been splitted up and the two logs to the same base of different numbers are being added. So I can represent this as a single log as well. What, what rule? Yeah, multiplication. So this is going to be equal to log to the base 2 of 15. 15. So that's 3 into 5, and this is going to result in log to the base 2 of 15. That's 3. Log. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, what right now we can just leave the answer in the exact form in terms of log. Okay. The next question is log 3 of 8 minus log 3 of 4. So that's a division law. Yes. So log to the base 3, is it going to be 4 upon 8 or 8 upon 4? Uh, 8 upon 4? Yes, 8 upon 4, which is going to be log to the base 3 of 2. Okay, for the last one. So I wasn't sure about this. I don't understand what to do with two logs. Okay, so the first expression says, first term says two times log five of two. Can I use the power rule and make this two as a power of this two? Yes. So this is gonna result in log to the base five of two square plus log to the base five of Now, log 2 squared is 4, so log to the base 5 of 4 plus log to the base 5 of 3. What is the next step that I can do? Uh, log 5 to the power of uh, 12. Log 5 of 12, yeah. not the power, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's try one more question on this. So in this question, you are given that log of, a, of base 4 of P is a value that is equal to X and log of base 4 of Q is a value equal to Y. And I want you to express in terms of X and or Y part A log to the base 4 P raised to the power of 5 minus log to the base 4 Q square. Now it's the same thing. All we need to do is we need to write this down in terms of X and Y. So if there's a possibility, apply the power rule, apply the multiplication, multiplication rule or the division rule. Do you want me to do the first one for you? Uh, so I'll try it first and then. What will happen to this power five? It will multiply. Five. It is going to be multiplied and I can write this as five times log to the base 4 of P minus 2 times log to the base 4 of Q. Now, what can I replace log to the base 4 of P with and log to the base 4 of Q with? Log to the base 4 times PQ, uh, to the raise to PQ. Log to the base 4. Oh, P upon Q. But I want to write my expression in terms of X and Y. So I will have to substitute for log to the base 4 of P, 
because I know that log to the base four of p is equal to x. So this will make it five x. And log to the base of four of q is simply y. So this is going to make it two y. So our expression is going to be five x minus two y. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let's try one more part. Log to the base four square root p plus five log to the base four of cube root q. Let's try this one. Uh, so I got minus x plus 5 upon 3y. 5 upon 3y. 5 upon 3y is the same. But I think there is a mistake over here. So square root p can be written as p raised to the power of 1 upon 2. Oh, okay. I wrote minus 1 instead. Yeah. No worries. And q can be written as 1 upon 3. This is going to go to the left hand side and multiply it. So 1 upon 2, log 4 of p is x, 5 times 1 upon 3 is 5 upon 3, and log 4 of q is y. Okay. Should I move on? Yes, sir. Okay, try part C now, which says log to the base 4 of 64 upon P. Simplify this to as simply as possible. So do you take P up and make 64 go to the power of 3? 64 to the power of? Uh, 4 to the power of 3. 4 to the power of 3, that's correct. So I can, as a first step, I can convert 64 as 4 to the power of 3 upon P. Now, which rule do you think I can apply over here? Which law? Um, oh, division law. Yes. So log to the base 4 of 4 cube minus log to the base 4 of P. What can I do with this power of 3? It becomes answer. Yes. So log 4 of 4 is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. And log 4 of P is? X. X. So that's our final answer.
All right. Any questions till here? No, sir. Okay. Now we are diving in, diving into solving of logarith logarithmic equations. Solving logarithmic equation, and these equations are going to be solved using the rules and laws of logs that we have done so far. But to start this, one thing that you should be aware of is that y if you have a function of log and y is equal to log to the base a of x, then in order for the log function to be defined, the base must always be greater than zero and cannot be equal to one. And the value of x over here, denoted as x, this value must always be greater than zero. Okay. And if we are solving the log function, you are always going to check let's say you solve a logarithmic equation and you get the values of x which we are going to refer as the roots so you are always going to check the roots before letting them to be your answer you are always going to check the roots by plugging them in the original equation So let's solve a question then. Solve two log to the base eight of x plus two equals to log base eight of two x plus nineteen. Two log eight of x plus two equals to log eight of 2x plus 19. What is the first step that comes to your mind? Um, so you can split it into two. Sorry? So you can split it as like 2 log a to the power of x plus no, that is what we won't do ever because this is not just this bracket does not tell you that x plus 2 is being multiplied by log of 8. Log of 8 of x plus 2 is one function, one term. Okay, so you cannot split it up as we multiply in an algebraic function. This is a logarithmic function, not an algebraic function. So, what we do is we are going to take this 2 and apply the reverse of power law and this is going to become log to the base 8 of x plus 2 the whole thing square is the first step clear yes now on the left hand side i am calculating log of base 8 of a value that is x plus 2 the whole thing square and i'm saying that this is equal to log to the base 8 of 2x plus 19. if the log on the left hand side of the equation and log of a value of, on the right hand side of the equation are same because I have written equals to over here. Can I say that this term is also equal to this term? Yeah. Therefore, x plus 2 the whole thing square is equal to 2x plus 19. Now this equation is easily solvable. It's a simple quadratic equation. I want you to uh, simplify this. Form an equation and solve for x. Give me the value of x. Uh, 3 and minus 5. Sorry? I'm getting 3 and minus 5. 
Right. You're getting three and minus five. Okay, so if you solve this, you get three and minus five. That's fine. Now, are both values acceptable? We need to check that. If I take the value of x as minus five and plug it over here in the original equation, what will this value be equal to? Minus two. Minus uh, three, right? Yeah. Can I can I ever have this value negative? No. No. So left hand side is not being so any part of the equation is not being satisfied. Then this is not the right value. Let's take x equals to three. By taking x equals to three, will I get both brackets as positive? Yes. Then obviously this is the right answer. Yeah. Try this one. Four log x of two minus log x of four equals to two. Try this one. Do you need my help? No, sorry, got it. Great. Is the answer two? Uh, I don't remember the answer. I'll just solve it for you and then you can compare your answer with mine. Okay. The first step is going to be log x to the power of four minus log x to the power of log x of four equals to two. Now I can apply the division rule. This is going to be log to the base two of four, sorry, two of four divided by four equals to two. If I also simplify this further, I know four is two square. So this is gonna result in two raised to the power of two equals to two. Or I can just simplify two square as four and then convert this into an exponential form. Yeah, that's what I did. I can say that x raised to the power of 2 is equal to 4. Then what is x? x is going to be plus minus 2. But I'm going to check for which value to take. Sometimes both, both of the values might be acceptable. Sometimes both of the values might not be acceptable. So x equals to positive 2. And if I plug in over here, this x represents the base in the original equation and the base can never be negative. It has to be greater than zero. So the only answer that is going to satisfy my equation is going to be x equal to two only. Yeah, you got x equal to two, right? Yes, sir. Was the method same? Yes. Great. Any questions so far? No, sir. All right. Uh, I can extend the class by 15 minutes today, okay? Okay. So, since previous 
class was also missed, so I'll take this opportunity and continue from. So, okay, so extend the class like fifteen minutes till the class timings for those two classes is over. Sorry. Will we be extending the class timings every class till the other uh, the two classes that I missed their timings are in in it? Most most probably yes. Uh, okay. Whenever I have time, so like today I have time, so I can extend fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay. For the class, even if I have time tomorrow, I can extend the class because my next class is gonna start at one thirty, so I have time by that time, so I can give you some extra time. Okay. Okay, sir. Solving exponential equations. Huh? So let's see the question says solve the following equation giving your answer in three SS. Part one says five raised to the power of two x plus one equals to seven. Okay. Now, in order to go from an exponential form to a log form, I'll have to first apply the log. And this is how you do this. You're going to take log. Now, I'm going to take log to the base ten because that is the most convenient log. Uh, and some older versions of calculator can only take that log. So LG gets it, this is okay? So I'm, when I say log to the base 10, I'm referring to LG. So I can apply log on both sides. This is how, this is gonna be my first test. So I can rewrite the equation by taking log on the both sides. And then, 2x plus 10, 2x plus 1 is a power. I can write this as a product over here times LG5 equals to LG7. Then I can divide LG5 on the other side by LG7. So LG7 divided by LG5. This is equal to 2x plus 1. 2x is going to be equal to LG7 upon LG5 minus 1. And if I want to eliminate 2 from here as well, I'm going to half it, half both the sides. So x key value is basically half times LG7 upon LG5 minus 1. So now I can plug this expression in my calculator and calculate the value of x to correct to three significant figures. So what is the value of x coming? One second. Is it 0 0.1045? So 0 0.1045 in three significant figures is going to be? 105. Yes. That is the value of x. Do you understand how did I get to the value of x? Yes. Okay. So try the next part. 3 raised to the power of 2x equals to 4 raised to the power of x plus 5. Uh, sir, could you go up so I can see the last question for one second, please? Thank you. Okay. 
So I'm not sure what to do with the X's. Yeah, let me help you. So I cannot simplify four raised four to the power of something and three to the power of something so that I can equate the powers because the terms are different over here. So this is a step where I'm going to introduce a log. So I'm going to take log to the base. Now log means LG right now. Log of three to the power of two X equals to log of four to the power of X plus five. Considering these powers, they can be multiplied on the left hand side. So two X times LG three, X plus five times LG four. Now I remember I want to find the value of X. This LG4, which is a term, can be multiplied algebraically with X as well as with 5. So X times LG4 plus 5 times LG4 equals to 2X times LG3. Okay, then you can collect the like term. So this is a term in X, this is a term in X. What I can do is I can write 2X LG3 minus x lg4 equals to 5 lg4 so far so good yes sir now what is the next step that do you think is possible over here to find the value of x you bring the lg4 together sorry um, I'm not sure. I want to find the value of x. Over here is also x present. Over here is also x present. Can I say that I can take x common out? Yeah. 2lg3 minus lg4 is going to be equal to 5lg4. And x is going to be equal to 5lg4 upon this bracket. 2LG3 minus LG4. Either you can write 2LG3 or you can convert this into LG9 as well. Your wish. Okay, I can also mm -hmm. simplify in the calculator. Five, five as an answer. Sorry? I'm getting 8.55 as an answer. 8.55, right. I'm also getting the same value in my calculator. Now, 
just a random thought if i were to simplify this manually to the last step this is going to be lg4 to the power of 5 divided by lg9 minus lg4 and since in the denominator these two logs are to the same base and are being subtracted if i apply the division rule this is going to be lg 9 upon 4 then obviously i'll have to plug it in the calculator yeah so sometimes you might be asked to represent or show that the answer simplifies to a certain term and you might be expected to simplify the denominator into a single log right now there are two logs in the denominator you could be asked okay yes but the value is right that is 8.55 Last question for the day. Solve two times three to the power of two x plus seven times three to the power of x equals to fifteen. Say so giving your answer to three significant figures. Now this equation is also an exponential equation. But we'll have to use some strategy to simplify this equation and solve it. Uh, so do you uh, bring, do the reverse power rule? Sorry? Do you do the reverse power rule and like multiply 2x by 2 and x by 7? No, but that, it's not a log equation, it's an exponential equation. That rule was only applicable when the equation was a log equation or the term was a log term. This right now is an exponential equation, so I cannot take two, I cannot do this to raise to the power 2x. Say it? Yeah. So I'm not sure what to do. Let me do the first step without telling you what I actually plan. Okay. You can just guess it. 3 raised to the power of 2x, can can I write it as 3 to the power of x squared? Yeah. Plus 7 times 3 raised to the power of x equals to 15. Okay. Okay. Now, now do you see it? Yeah. So what do I do with 3x, 3 raised to the power of x? Mm. Log 3x. Don't introduce log over here. Okay. What will happen if I replace this 3x with a variable, let's say y let y be equal to 3 to the power of x. If I replace y with 3 to the power of x, what do I end up with? 2y squared plus 7y equals to 15. Does this equation look similar to you? Yeah, quadratic. It's a, it's, it's a quadratic equation. So I can easily factorize this and solve for y. Get me the two values of y. Uh, 3 upon 2 and minus 5. 3 upon 2 and minus 5. Okay. But the question wasn't in terms of y. It was in terms of x. So I'll have to replace y again. So y, I, I suppose y to be equal to 3 to the power of x. So hence the value of 3 over 2 is actually the value of 3 over 3. 3, 3 upon 2 is the value of 3 to the power of x. Similarly, minus 5 would be equated to 3 root 3 raised to the power of x. Let's solve this first. How do you plan on solving this first? Uh, you convert it to log form. Yes, you convert it into log form or or you the simplest method would be to introduce log on both sides. 
Yeah. And to find the value of x, I apply the power rule. So as per the power rule, this is going to be LG3 upon 2 divided by LG3. Yeah, so I got 0 0.369. 0 0.369, that's correct. Now, what about solutions from here? What do I do now? Whenever you are stuck, whenever you are stuck in an exponential equation, convert it into a log form by taking log on both sides of the equation. But if you take log over here, would you be able to solve log of a negative number? No, we must have. No. So you will say no solutions from here. That is because there is no value of x that when 3 is raised to that value is going to give you a negative number. Because if you recall the graph of 3 to the power of x, it's an exponential graph. The graph lies entirely above the x-axis. If the graph lies entirely above the x-axis, there is no value when the graph is going to be equal to minus 5. See, this is the line of minus 5. The graph is never equal to minus 5. That's why there is no value of x, which will give you 3 raised to the power of x equals to minus 5. That's why it, we don't have any solution. And if you convert this into a log form, log of a negative number cannot be taken. Hence, no solution. So the only answer is going to be 0 0.369. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Copy this down. Note this down. And if you have any questions, please ask. No, so I'm fine. Fine. Okay. So I'll stop till here today. Okay. Uh, tomorrow is the next class. I want you to revise all these rules so that whatever we do in tomorrow's class makes sense to you. Okay? Okay. Thank all you. Right. I'll see you. You're welcome. I'll see you tomorrow, okay. inshallah. Okay.